Yeah, hey everyone, Brian with you from the GameCom, and today we're starting a brand new series, our first series with Crusader Kings 3, uh, the follow-up to Crusader Kings 2, which just came out today. I am playing it on Xbox Game Pass for PC, which it is currently free if you have Xbox Game Pass. I don't know if Game Pass still has the thing where you can subscribe for three months for a dollar, but uh, if you guys want to try the game out for yourself, you can play it there. Eventually, we will most likely pick it up on Steam, because Crusader Kings 2 is one of my favorite games of all time, probably I don't say one of my entrances to strategy games, but definitely my entrance into grand strategy games. So if you've never seen the Crusader Kings game series, essentially they're grand strategy games, which means there tends to be a lot more going on than a typical strategy game, number one. But number two, Crusader Kings, the series itself, is a little different than other grand strategy games because it's a little more character focused. It's about essentially building a dynasty that's going to last through the eras. Uh, it's less about map painting, essentially conquering in every single territory on the map and instead more about the random crazy stupid stories you can tell with your character it's about murder intrigue it's about you know sleeping with as many women or men as you can it's about you know marrying your horse at least you could in crusader kings 2 you know essentially it's about telling a story less about hey and i mean don't get me wrong they're still conquering you could still conquer the entire map if you want although this map's pretty huge so i don't know how feasible it is but I'm sure some people will, um, but it's more about telling a story, and that's going to be what we're going to be doing. Now, since this is a grand strategy game, there is a whole lot going on. I'm going to try explaining as much of it as possible, so if this is your first time to a Crusader Kings game, uh, you hopefully will be able to hop into the game after watching my series or watching a couple episodes, but I'm not going to get to everything because there's so much. If you are familiar, if you played Crusader Kings 2, Crusader Kings 3 is going to be pretty familiar, although there is some new stuff which we're going to talk about hopefully and go over hopefully i explain everything correct but there is a lot of stuff so you know forgiveness please if i'm not exactly perfect with every single set and you know definitely let me know if i say something wrong in the comments and i will try to rectify it in future uh episodes so with Crusader Kings 3, we have two different start times. We can play either in 867 or in 1066. Now, the game itself, I think, goes to 14 something. So if we start in 867, we're going to have like 600 years worth of dynasty, which we can make. So we can have a pretty long, uh, a long series going on. I don't know if I doubt we're going to go through the whole thing. Uh, it, it's kind of the game where there's not necessarily a win condition per se. It's just kind of like whatever you want. There's many different ways to win the game is what the tutorial actually said and that's kind of true so we're going to kind of set our own objectives here when we start the game now uh in each of these eras they have a bunch of different characters that uh they're basically highlighting that you can play as each one of these characters now okay i noticed something i think every one of these characters here is actually predetermined like they went in and they said hey these are the stats for this character these are the traits of these characters this is the heir the spouse i think all these are um predetermined but you can actually play as any ruler as well and one thing i notice is it seems like all the other rulers are a little more randomized which makes sense because i mean this is a huge freaking map here i mean we can play anywhere we can play all the way down here in africa and play as just like a random dude down here in africa uh, i don't know if there's any kingdoms down here it doesn't look like any of these are kingdoms but i actually don't know the names of this let's see you're just a du uh, duchy so there's four different levels uh actually this would be a kingdom okay there's four different levels there are um counties there are duchies there are kingdoms and then there are empires Essentially, a duchy is in charge of a various amount, usually three to four uh, counties. A kingdom is usually uh, over, what, four or five different duchies. And then an empire is usually over a bunch of different uh, kingdoms. So, for example, the Byzantium Empire has a bunch of different uh, kingdoms inside of it. Now, the kingdoms may or may not be formed. I, I think in the Byzantium Empire, it's mostly just duchies. And you can see all the different duchies here. I don't think any of these are kingdoms. I think they're all just duchies um i don't know if you can actually have an empire and then have a bunch of uh kingdoms inside the duchy i don't or, or a bunch of kingdoms inside the empire i don't remember if that's a thing i don't know if like we created an empire or sorry if we created a kingdom in here if we would instantly uh, declare independence i don't remember on that but Point being, there's a whole bunch of different areas we can play as, and I mean, I want to play the crap out of this game. I want to play a whole bunch of these random areas. Khan, oh dude, is this like, this is Mongolia, I'm pretty sure, right? Right? It's impassable terrain here. 
Wait, that's all impassable? Oh, no, no, I see. That's just a huge impassable terrain. Is this like... I actually don't know how this would work. But anyway, yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of different variations. The other thing to keep in mind is there's a religion. So every one of these different areas has a different religion. And every one of these religions plays out differently. Like, for example, this Ashru religion, which I can't really pronounce. This religion uh, values one of their tenets of the religion is essentially human sacrifice. So there's just like a lot of different fun, entertaining things. And we can tell a lot of fun, different, entertaining stories. Uh, I think to start with, we're actually going to start in the Byzantium Empire, but we're not going to start here in the 1066. We're actually going to go back and start in the 867 start. So we're going to go back here. But once again, instead of playing one of these randomized people um, or one of the bigger rulers, we're actually going to play inside the Byzantium Empire and I actually want to start uh, as a count. So what that means is we essentially have a boss who's going to be in charge of us, our duke, who's going to be a, a, above us. So, for example, if we looked here at uh, this count here, Count Christophorus, uh, he basically, his liege is the Duke of Akia, uh, Akia which I'm going to butcher all these names, I apologize. Uh, and then his boss is essentially uh, Basilis, who is the emperor here of the Byzantium Empire. So we're going to basically have two goals here. I don't know which duke we're going to start at or sorry which count we're gonna start as I noticed like I said before every one of these counts has like their stats are randomized I originally was thinking about maybe playing as the count of uh, Athens but they actually don't have a count the count is actually the Duke here so uh, essentially the Duke here owns all these territories and he currently has it looks like he has both of these territories like personal holdings and then all these other guys are essentially his vassals which are basically people he's in charge of now we could become this guy here this count theodorus because he's essentially this dude's uh son so eventually we would inherit all of these territories but that might just be a little easy i think instead i'm probably going to pick one of these two guys down here and we're going to have essentially um, our goal is going to be either a to recreate the kingdom of Greece and become an independent Greece. Now, I don't know if we can actually become Greece because I was looking at the different titles and it actually had a completely different name. I'll have to actually go in. So I don't know. Like I know in uh, CK2, you could actually make the kingdom of Greece because I actually did this once before. So I don't know if it'll be the kingdom of Greece or if it'll be something different. But anyways, we're proud Greek man and we don't want to be ruled over by the people way over here in the Byzantium Empire or something along those lines so either a we're going to make an independent greece number one or number two we're going to try to rise to the emperor status and we'll actually try to become the emperor of the byzantine empire now that's going to be a little harder because you know he exists all the way over here and we're all the way over here in greece and so we probably don't have any titles and to essentially kind of rise to it you kind of have to like insert yourself into the succession line which is going to be a little interesting like for example the prince here you know we could you know if he had no son we could essentially maybe marry his daughter and then become emperor that way but a lot of that's going to require luck and it's also somewhat unlikely that he's going to end up marrying his daughter to us and even if he did marry his daughter chances are it would be a matrimonial marriage where essentially his daughter would be in charge but what we could do then is maybe then become our son who would become the emperor but anyways that's a long 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 way away so instead we're going to start i think as either one of these three duchess or uh, sorry counts um but i want to see their stats so he's wrath he's brave and he's stubborn you'll notice each one of these gives a different like this gives you stewardship plus three can we actually see our total stats here it doesn't look like we can actually see our starting stats here um he's also brave which gives martial on prowess um attraction too as well and wrathful i don't think he starts yeah they're always start unmarried i don't think we have an heir either right no we don't have an heir either which is fine then here you're also unmarried you're a vassal let's see you're impatient honest and compassionate okay i like that that's somewhat nice and then you're gluttonous impatient wrathful i definitely don't want to be you i think we'll start over here as this dude because yeah, i mean he just looks cool uh so we'll be the count of messinania 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 man dang it i don't know it's something like that so our first goal here is we're going to want to become a player heir. essentially or we're going to want to make get an heir we're going to want to get married and then have ourselves an heir the only essential way that you can lose the game here is essentially if you uh, uh have no air and you die 
So, or essentially you lose all your territory and stuff like that. Of what we're probably gonna wanna do is, to start with, we're gonna eventually wanna take over the duchy from this guy, but he's gonna be a little stronger than us most likely, so we're gonna eventually kinda need to, eh, we'll have to figure out how we're gonna end up taking over. So, the other cool thing about this is, we're just gonna go ahead and play. Uh, we can actually switch character at any time. So if we decided, we could go play this guy if we so wanted, if we want to switch it. So how do we begin here? We're, uh, we have 18 gold here. Then we have prestige here. Prestige is essentially, is this pause? Okay, we're paused. Prestige is essentially how, um, hmm, what would be the best way to describe it? How famous you are would essentially be the best way to describe it. Now, what's different about this game versus previous game is in previous games, sometimes you have to do decisions which cost fame. So for example, if we win a war, that's gonna give us fame. But if we're gonna call in an ally into one of our wars, that might actually cost uh, prestige. Uh, sorry, sorry, I said fame. Uh, winning a war might give you prestige, but calling in an ally to help you out in a war might actually cost prestige. Also, different decisions in the game might also cost you prestige and stuff like that. In the previous game, that kind of sucked because, you know, the more prestige you have, the better people like like you, the more famous your character is and stuff like that. But now instead, we actually have this level of fame. So every time you take up the level of fame, this is uh, independent of your prestige level. It basically just the longer, um, man, I can't get you to stay. I don't know how to actually click this and stay. Come on, baby. Also, the map is, because I'm getting to the edge of the map. But essentially, uh, uh, the more fame you get, I think here, I think you need to get like a thousand. How do we get to the next level here? Oh, progress there. So as we get a thousand fame, then we'll actually get to the next level. And you'll see here, since we're established, we have no uh, uh, effects. Basically nothing's happening because we're established. But if we came down here and got distinguished, if we can make this actually stay, I thought it was just right click, but it doesn't seem to just be right click. Is it double click? What about? I'm clicking both mouses here. Okay, whatever. If we become distinguished, then our secular opinion, basically anyone who is secular is going to get plus five opinion of us, and we actually get one extra knight. And there's uh, more levels than that. So let's see. Distinguished. Can we... Come on. Come on. Oh, oh, there you go. Illustrious, exalted above men, and living legend. So, essentially, as we do more things in the game, we become more uh, distinguished, hopefully, and that gives us better bonuses. We also have piety here, which is essentially the exact same situation, but that's based on the church's view of us. We are orthodox. Who is actually in charge of the orthodox religion here? Um, well, we'll look at that here in a second, because that's a whole nother thing. And then we also over here have renown. Renown is, it's like prestige, but shared by the entire dynasty. So essentially, as we have kids and stuff like that, that's gonna take up our renown, and our dynasty is gonna become more and more and more popular here. Then here we just have the total amount of soldiers we have, uh, the elite quality, essentially, this is how strong your troops are. Um, so essentially, they go up from one to, I think, five. And so like, if the quality is only level one, that's gonna really, really hinder you when you're going and fighting, especially if you're fighting troops that are of elite quality. These are our holdings. We can technically hold four different holdings. So for example, if we had uh, the county over here of Lasonia, uh, like if we declared war on him and took it over, then we'd be up to two of four holdings. If you go over your holding limit, then you start getting some severe penalties. And so that's where you need to make some vassals and stuff like that, which currently, we currently have one vassal and he is the mayor of, let's see, he's the mayor of this city, right? Yes. Yeah, so he currently is the owner of that. And then we also have a bishop here. And then we currently own the castle here. So you can see there are there are four different towns inside this territory, which is different from CK2, uh, because in CK2 is essentially one different area. But we can actually go to every one of these different areas. This one's empty, so eventually we can construct a new holding. Like we could put another city here eventually if we so desired. Um, but that's going to require a lot of money. And that's probably not going to be something we'll be able to do anytime soon. This is essentially where we're starting with. So these are the areas is that we're, we're definitely gonna wanna build this up because this is like our initial holdings and we're probably not gonna give them up ever unless of course we end up owning all of the Byzantium Empire or something like that. Dude, Bulgaria up here is pretty freaking big, dude. 
Yeah, this is cool. This is cool. All right, so what else do we got? We did talk about the faith here, or at least we mentioned it. So we're Orthodox. Every religion has three different tenets. So these are the things that are important to the uh, uh, the religion. So number one is communion. Characters may seek indulgence from their head of faith to pay gold in exchange for piety. Uh, piety, rather. Characters who have committed criminal acts may seek indulgences to gain forgiveness. And then we may get uh, excommunicated by the head of faith. Uh, Monositia. Um, courtiers can take vows and become monk. Interesting. That gives you extra uh, piety. Um, but gluttonous is then a sin because of that. And we'll actually talk about sins and virtues here. And then petrarchy. Uh, we get extra fervor per holy site held. Uh, characters uh, may gain additional bonuses. Okay, interesting. Upon finishing a, uh, a pilgrimage. So now this is a little new in this game. Uh, there are different uh, sins. So essentially, if we have any of these sins, any of these uh, character traits. So for example, our character traits are compassionate, honest, and patient. We're also a skilled tactician and a desert warrior. So it's great. It's great. What's our stats here? Eh, we're okay. We're not great. We're, we're, we're decent. But anyways, if we have any of those bad sins, essentially everyone who is orthodox is going to not like us as much and we'll lose piety per turn. Uh, we're in the reverse. If we have any of these virtues, then people would love us. Now, uh, the other things to note is there were also, uh, let's see, marriage types, divorce must be approved by the head of faith. Uh, marriage between cousin, aunts, nephews, uncles, and nieces is allowed. Okay. And then we can legitimize our bastards. And then the head of our faith is this dude. And where is he? He's just a vassal. I think he's probably just hanging out in the capital would be my assumption. Anything, nah, yeah, so that's pretty much it. It's male dominated. Okay, cool. Now, there's some really cool religions up here. If we came up here to like the one we were talking about earlier, uh, this one has human sacrifice. So that means you can, you know, sacrifice people you conquer. Their sins are forgiving and craven and deceitful. So if you're a forgiving person, they actually hate you for it. Wrathful, brave, and vengeful is actually, you know, virtues. So being wrathful and vengeful is actually, you know, beneficial to that religion what do you have ancestor let's see stubborn just brave stubborn is actually a trait oi oi so yeah there's a lot of different variations here and the other thing is we can always create our own religion now the thing is if we created a branch of our christian faith the thing is we can kind of pick this however we want but your old faith will consider you hostile so you know we don't want to necessarily have everyone hate us to begin with because chances are you know our lieges and stuff like that are probably going to try revoking our titles and things are not going to go particularly well for us now we also have our house and so we actually have our house name and we have in addition to that we have our motto we're going to go ahead and rename our house if i can click it can you actually change oh there we go so we're going to be house common and our motto is going to be uh uh, uh, oh, I should have spent more time thinking about this. I guess I need some, I need some good, uh, uh thoughts from you guys about what's our motto going to be. For now, let's just be unbent. Wait, wait, wait. Unbent, unbroken, unbent. Oh, God, what was the, ah, uh, Game of Thrones, which unfortunately, you know, uh, 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 house motto, uh, 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 uh Game of Thrones. Unfortunately, my brain is kind of like it's getting like lunchtime house words. It was we don't want to do winter is coming. No, 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 not Stark, not Aaron. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, we could do we do not sew from House Greyjoy, but we're actually going to sew. Yeah, there it is. House Martell. I'm bowed, I'm bent, I'm broken. I'm bowed. I knew it was something with the knee. <laughs> I'm bowed, unbent, unbroken. Boom. That's like my favorite name of like any house probably ever so our dynasty is currently obscured we can actually like make our own dynasty tree eventually but we might just stay with this one since we can just rename it there's currently two living members in it which is us and we have a daughter oh wait yeah we have a daughter oh we're actually married too all right hi what's your stats so she's a charismatic negotiator okay she's calm generous and trusting sweet so now what's cool about these traits is sometimes certain traits are actually passed on. You can actually pass them on to your kids. Uh, where does it say it? 
I don't know if any of these traits are pass onable. Like, you can actually pass them on. Uh, personality, personality, personality. Yeah, I don't know if any of these traits you can actually pass on. And then some of these are childhood traits, which then might eventually become different as they uh, become older. Can we actually change the symbol here? I don't think so. You also can't create characters yet in this game. In previous games, you could actually create uh, characters and houses and stuff like that. They said they might add that in the future, but we hadn't seen that quite yet. Anything else we need to talk about here? We're also part of the Greek culture. What's different about this game in CK2, there was different technology, and essentially like you could gain technology points and then invest in different technology, which would give you different advantages and stuff like that. Instead, technology is basically based off your culture. So the more your culture has of certain text the more uh, different texts you unlock so you know we can't unlock text until essentially our culture gains some of these texts and stuff like that and so different things like for example elephants you know we can't actually gain uh we can't use any elephants yet until the greek culture is present in south uh, or east asia so uh er, rather india so essentially if there were any greeks over here then we could potentially gain elephant tree which is kind of cool because you know it doesn't necessarily have to be us that goes and does that it, you know it could be our emperor that goes all the way over there so are we ready to go i think so want to learn more about the game i understand yeah 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 it Advice, education, your heir won't become a great ruler without an education. Okay, so it looks like your heir has no guardian. To find a guardian, you should use the educate child interaction. Okay, and we can give them awards. So let's find our daughter. Right now, she is our heir. Let's actually look here at our realm. So succession laws is male preference. Now, it can be male only, where essentially we would essentially lose the game because our daughter would be inheriting, or our daughter couldn't inherit anything. But since it's male preference right now, our daughter would be able to inherit, but if we had a son, the son would then take preference over the daughter. Uh, we could change it if we switch our crown laws and stuff like that. If we got up here to uh, high crown authority, then we can change this so that we could go to uh, equal. Although orthodoxy doesn't have the equal doctrine, so we actually can't do that with this religion, I guess. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Interesting. Then uh, we also have the succession law right now. We are the worst one, which is confederate partition. So essentially under confederate partition, your titles will be divided equally between your children. New titles will be created for younger heirs. So essentially what would happen is if we had four different territories and we had four kids, every kid would have one of the four titles when we died, which doesn't sound like a big deal until you realize you can only play as one of those four characters. So essentially we would play as the oldest and then essentially we would end up losing three of the titles. So eventually we want to, you know, kind of switch um, up our succession laws and we'd rather be like a uh, primogenerate, which essentially means that uh, oh, we actually don't even have it. The Greek culture does not have the innovation, but essentially at that point, the eldest child would inherit everything. Uh, we can come over here, I think. Nah, Greek culture doesn't have it yet. Uh, the lion's share of the titles will go to your heir. The rest will be divided among your children. So essentially, we just kind of want to get up here as quickly as possible. Yeah, we can't even do any of these yet. So we kind of don't want to have too many kids. Ideally, you want to have like maybe one son <laughs> and then a few daughters. But then if your son dies, you know, in infancy or as a kid, then that could be a problem too. The other thing to note, uh, man, we're going through a lot. I know there's a lot here in the game. Um, these are different domains. This is, we have one vassal right now. We know that. Uh, we have the military here. There are now men at arms regiments. Essentially, these work very similar to the, uh, oh God, I forgot what they were called in CK2. Um, but essentially, uh, we have levies, which are basically just, you know, normal peasants that we can raise and fight for us. You know, at any time I can raise my army, although there is monthly maintenance for raising them, number one. And then there's also some negative modifiers to having your army raised while they're currently at war um, or while we're not at war, rather. Although we are at war, so we wouldn't take any negatives for that. But we're not going to go join this war because, quite frankly, we're just going to let our uh, uh, emperor do his thing. But anyways, in addition to that, we can create men in arms regiments, and these are essentially just better troops. Like, for example, the Onagers, these are going to be a little bit better at, like, sieging, where, you know, light horsemen are going to be better at fighting in plains and drylands. And do they get a bonus? They also counter archers. Okay. Bowmen counter skirmishers, footmen counter heavy infantry, pikemen counter cav, and then armor footmen counter spearmen. So, you know, they all have the different, uh, 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 
the different statuses. We also have knights here. Essentially, knights are uh, basically this kind of improve the effectiveness of your army. So, you know, we talked about the four or five different star, the knights, the more knights you have, the better off you are. The thing is, these cost money and upkeep. So, you know, we may go ahead and recruit, but we might wait on that. Like, for example, you suck. Are you one of our knights? Yeah, he's one of our knights, and he has freaking one prowess. So essentially, if you ever got fought, prowess is your hand-to-hand -hand combat. We should talk about those, too. I'm sorry, this is going to be a longer episode just talking about everything. Diplomacy is your first. This basically increases everyone's uh, opinion of you, and then also your effectiveness in diplomacy screens. Uh, your marshal is essentially your military strength, how big your levy size is, how quickly they reinforce, and your advantage when commanding armies. Your stewardship is the taxes and how much domain you can have. Uh, your intrigue, ugh, terrible. This is your scheme discovery chance, basically people who are trying to murder you or basically trying to do schemes against you. And then also how uh, successful you would be in doing those. And then your learning is your piety. Also, I don't know if it increases other stats too because that's like your learning skill. And now also that prowess, which is essentially how great you are in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So that's all of that. We have our titles here. This is basically the titles we own. And you can see here, the de jure essentially is what it's part of. And so once you have, like you can declare, like for example, if we had a couple of these territories, we could declare war for the de jure um, title. Uh, the duchy. So essentially, once we have a couple of these other duchies, we can then declare war on the current duke and take over the title from him because it's like we have a better claim for it right now. We can basically press our claims. So that's how that works. Uh, then we also have our consul here. These are basically just different people that you put in charge of various things. And uh, each one of these then can help you in different ways and do different things. Like, for example, we're going to go ahead and use him to go ahead and fabricate a claim on one of our um, neighboring provinces. So we can go eventually conquer it and then we can go use our spy master to hey and actually we're gonna go ahead and do this We're gonna go ahead and have him find secrets. Uh, this is kind of new in the game Possible side effects monthly progress 5% so we're gonna send him over there uh, What's new in this game is you can actually come here to intrigue and you can get hooks and secrets So if you discover someone else's secret like for example, let's say they don't believe in God or let's say they're secretly uh, In love with their daughter or some crazy thing like that You can actually use these hooks to have them vote for you or you know There's a lot of different things you can use it for uh, or you can actually just expose that like reveal it And then they would take a huge penalty because everyone's like oh my god dude you love your horse what the hell so you know that's how you use intrigue and stuff like that so essentially i want to put my spy master out there just to see if we can discover some kind of juicy details about everyone else in the map let's see anything else here count yeah here's our court once again we only have we don't have a physician i don't know if we really need it we only have one person this dude would actually make a great vassal because he's content essentially that means he's never going to really be mad because he doesn't have extra territories but right now it doesn't matter we have no factions against us and we have some decisions but i don't know any of these really matter right now we could go on a pilgrimage but we don't have the money, so we're gonna kinda skip that for now. Anything else we need to talk about before we unpause the game? Oh, that was a lot. That was a whole freaking heck of a lot, man. So, um, let's go back to our council here and let's look at everyone's stats. So, right now, our countess, she, uh, our wife, she's essentially assisting ruler. So, what this is doing is she's given us basically a little bit of every different stat. She's given us plus two in diplomacy, plus one to martial, plus one to stewardship, intrigue, and learning. Now, I'm wondering, is that actually showing up here? Yes, that is showing up there. We can actually change her so she would give us, you know, plus six in diplomacy. So that would make everyone like us. Um, but then in this case, it wouldn't give us quite as much as, you know, across the board. Wait, maybe it would. Two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, actually, this would be just as good. We get just as many stats. But, you know, we would lose the plus one we have currently from uh, the intrigue. So I don't know if we want to do that. Maybe, I mean, here's the thing. These stats kind of suck. So maybe just getting as much diplomacy as possible right now might be the best option. He's actually not even that great of a bishop either. Can we switch the job here? How do we switch? Cannot fire council. Ah, okay. But, okay, so for example, we have a chancellor here. We could go ahead and appoint someone else as a chancellor, but right now he has the best stats. Now, at our mayor currently is our spy master, so he is the one vassal we have. We want him to be happy with us because he is our vassal. Uh, essentially, that's about the only opinion we care about. You know, you kind of care about the masses, you know, and their opinion of you. 
I don't know actually where we see the, uh, here we go. Popular opinion, zero. Is that good or bad? Do we want that to be zero? If popular are unhappy, they might start a peasant faction. Easiest ways to ensure the holders the same culture and faith. Okay, but so we kind of care about the popular opinion of the masses, but really we care only about our vassals. And right now, this is our only vassal right now, so he's our spy master. So we definitely want him on our console. Any one of your vassals always wants to be on your console. So there is technically a better spy master, but that's probably the best position for him, and we don't want to make him unhappy as of now. Eventually, as we own more territory, we might actually end up giving this province to someone else, in which case we wouldn't have to really worry about having him as our spy master. Uh, all right, so we're going to want to go ahead and fabricate a claim. Let's look at our two neighbors right now. This is this guy right here. He has 145 troop potential. Then this guy over here has 162. We currently had, what, 193, which is a little bit larger than both of the other guys. So we will go ahead and fabricate a claim on this guy. It's going to take 20 months. This is different in CK3 uh, versus CK2. In CK2, it was like a random percentage chance that it would happen, and sometimes it could take forever. Now, basically, it's just based on your scheming, and it just gives you a, a set amount of time for it to happen. So that's great. Not all of these, for example, have that, though. Like, for example, murdering still has a potential chance to fail and or succeed. So, anyways... Let's see, this one, we could do one of two things. We can either do domestic affairs, which gives our vassal opinion increased. And internal war. We don't really care about that. Or we can do this one, which gives us extra prestige. So yeah, we'll do that one. Then our steward, we can do collect taxes, which gives us 2% extra taxes. Or actually, let's see if there's a better steward, because you suck. Yeah, he should be a warrior, man. What's our Petros? What is going on here? So our marshal here of this guy is plus four. So congratulations, you are now going to be... Now this is going to piss him off a little bit because I'm swapping him out. But you're going to now be in charge of this. And then, whoopsie, let's go ahead and see if we can find someone better. Not really. We can go ahead and have so what's also different about this game is your court is a lot smaller in this game than it was in ck2 but there's people always moving in and out of your court so we could go invite at least three able-bodied men oh this is basically inviting knights and eh. so that kind of sucks actually so hmm i don't think it matters right now we might as well go ahead and run with uh because we can't actually invite. Well, one of the things we could do is we could go F. Uh, actually, where is the find? Find character. We could literally sit here and try finding someone that has a lot of. So we could sit here and be like, hey, you're an adult. You're not a ruler. Uh, doesn't matter your status. I think you can have female people. And we want probably Orthodox religion, Greek culture. And eh, we'll do any Byzant uh, Byzantium. And then it doesn't matter here. And so then what we're looking for, do we have to search? I don't think so. We're going to look for someone high, and we can actually invite them to our court. But some of them aren't going to say yes. In previous games, you could actually see who would join your court. I think it actually has to be male. Now, we're not really that big of a deal right now, so odds are we're not going to get too many people joining our court. So I think for now, we're just going to go ahead and roll with um, the best dude available, which was this guy who is number seven. He's actually my chancellor. God dang it. Uh, all right. So congratulations. This guy is now we're recruiting him and we're going to recruit him. If we had a hook on someone, so, for example, those people who are like, no, we won't join your court. If we find out just something juicy about them, we might be able to use that hook to actually get them to join our court and then become our steward. But, you know, you don't necessarily want your council pissed off at you. So, you know, that's kind of the other thing. So, anyways, we want you to collect taxes. Yeah, we don't really care about increasing development as of now. Uh, Spy Master, you were finding secrets. Good. And then we can either organize levies, which increases our levy size, or train commanders, which is men in arm maintenance. So we want to increase levies, which I think what everyone's doing. So here's the other thing that's new about CK3. Every character has different lifestyles. So, um... 
we can select any one of these lifestyles and essentially each one has number one a focus this focus is something you do once every i think five years and essentially it just gives you a focus for what you know um basically just a bonus for the next five years in addition to that you will slowly start leveling up and as you level up you can unlock different traits for your character and eventually get a new trait at the end um well these aren't necessarily traits these are more just like little benefits so it's kind of like an rpg system for your character which is kind of nice now because we currently have the commander trait or the education as a skilled tactician that means we're going to get a benefit here in the martial tree so we're going to gain 30 percent more uh experience here so for example we'd gain 32 experience a month uh and once we get a thousand we basically unlock and actually we already have some traits here too so we already currently have strict organization and serve the crown okay interesting but the thing is we can change that we can come over here and instead say you know what we really want some more intrigue and go this way um the downside is a we're not going to gain as much experience um we can also reset as well but that costs a lot of stress which is a whole nother thing in the game stress essentially uh if you basically do anything outside your character so for example i am a honest character so if i go and lie to someone that's going to cause me stress and eventually if you max out your stress you're basically going to die essentially so it's kind of interesting how that works out so what are we going to do here with our lifestyle? I think we will just go do Marshall since it already started. Uh, I think we don't really care about Dread. Dread is a new thing which basically can reduce uh, tyrannical. So, for example, different decisions make people dislike you and because it might become considered tyrannical. So, for example, if you like uh, steal someone's title or take away one of your vassal's title, that would be considered tyrannical. But if you have a high enough Dread, basically people fear you and they might not mess with you. So, you know, that's kind of a thing here. Um, Prowlis, or Prowlis is pretty terrible. But I don't know bumping it up is really going to make much of a difference. I think just having more martial, especially since we are going to be declaring war here, I think that's just going to be our best option here. And then we are probably going to want... Try to gain plus 20%. See, we went... I don't know if I like this. Eventually, to get Overseer, we're going to have to go down both of these points. Siege progress against revolts. Interesting. Um, yo, yo, yo. Go away. Mercenary higher cost is cheaper. Absolute control for counties. I mean, eventually we can grab all three of these if we so desired. But fort level plus one. Army maintenance, I get 50%. These seem so much better. I think we're actually going to come this way. Yeah, I think we're eventually going to come against uh, come this way eventually. Okay. <sighs> so we got a new member of our court. And then these are just minor issues here. So they're suggesting, hey, fabricate a claim over here. Well, I fabricated one there, so that's fine. So we'll dismiss you. We are actually short a night, but we don't have the money on that right now. And you declare war on some dude. Who is this guy? Oh, okay. So we can declare war on him. Why can we declare? Oh, because of holy war. So because he has a different religion, we can come and declare war on him. But... I highly doubt we can fight this guy. He's got 448 strength, so we're probably not going to worry about him. Now, the thing is, he's not going to end up declaring war on us because he would uh, have to fight the entire Byzantium Empire. So, wedding celebration. Okay, so apparently this counted as us just getting married. With my marriage to Countess Yunki, the realm expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding celebration as well within my right to collect a royal aid duty as part of this, but some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax. So we can gain 75 gold, or I'll let my uh, subjects enjoy uh, the festivities. We already have a lot of prestige here, so I'm going to go ahead and just gain the money, because money is kind of short. And does that mean we can get another knight here? Oh, actually, no, we're at our limit again. Huh, when did that happen? Well, eventually, we will want to grab ourselves some um, men-at-arm regiments, and we'll probably want that before we actually go to war. The thing is, we're probably going to want to maybe build up some buildings here. Like, so, for example, every one of our holdings, we can start constructing new buildings, and we're probably going to want to construct some new buildings to gain some more money, um, just because our income's kind of eh before we actually look at going to war yet. But we'll see. If we can maybe get some bribes from some people from discovering some fun stuff, then... You know, that might be what we're going to end up doing first. But we'll see. Any decisions we care about? So we can call a hunt to lose stress. Don't really care about that. We can hold a feast, which increases your vassal's opinion. Doesn't really matter. Pilgrimage. We could do this. A 
A notable guest has arrived. Oh, he's got 18 Marshall. Interesting. He is dishonorable. Who do we have? This was just a random dude, right? Oh, he's one of my knights. Does it matter if your knights hate you? I actually don't know. So I'm gonna go ahead and recruit this guy to the court just because he's way better. And so now one of our knights hated us. Can I actually fire your knights? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, he actually doesn't have a lot of um, prowess either. Huh. Huh. Is this the guy we just fired? This is the guy we just fired. Okay. So can I get rid of him? Because I actually don't care about him much. I don't know. He doesn't like us nearly as much, but that's okay. Because, like, he's just some random dude. So I don't really actually care about that. So much happening, guys. Sorry it's going to be a little slower. We're going to go a little bit longer on this first episode just because it's the first episode. We're about 50% to find secrets. Hopefully we actually find one. The other thing you'll notice is you don't actually have to build boats in this game. You just basically send your troops to the um, sea and they will immediately uh, join a boat. Now, where the heck are you going, by the way, dude? I don't know. So rest for the weary. Sweaty, tired, and in need of food, a long day of training with the troops is coming to an end. As we search for a place to camp, we spot an old and abandoned castle in the distance. Running a hand through my hair, I declare, that is where we will make our camp tonight. The sun is setting, and with every step towards the ruin, it looks more ominous. Before, the soldiers are whispering about ghosts. Let's venture inside. Or we can gain height and soldier morale. Nah, let's find some treasure, dude. Let's go freaking find some ghosts. Darkness, dampness, and desolation reign inside the castle, and all traces of life are gone. Peering upon the Karen stairs, decaying stairs, I spot what might be the remnants of lush tapestries and old paintings. Looking down the spiral steps, I see only darkness, reaching far down in the ground underneath the castle. So, let's see. Search upper floors. We got a 43% chance to gain 75 gold, 57% to gain 15 gold. Gold is gold here. Or... We can gain the trait Brave, or I swear that Shadow just moved for 35 and we lose 20 Dread and gain 40 Stress. Dude, Brave is so good though. How do I actually... Brave? Plus two Marshall, plus three Prowess, the Attraction Opinion, the Vassal Opinion, uh, but we are more likely to die in battle. Screw it, we're doing it. Yeah! Boom! So now we are freaking brave. So now our marshal is up to 17, which is hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Good, 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 good. We actually have another war going. My liege is now at war with... Who? Oh. Alright. Random... Uh... 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 Vikings. So, weird. I wonder if that's where you're going. Which is interesting. Recruited. Can we get rid of these? No little guess. Yeah, I think we already asked you, so we're fine here. How goes their scheme in? So, that's kind of what this game's about. You get these random pop-ups and stuff like that, which is kind of fun. We should probably go to speed four now at this point, because there's not really a whole lot happening. Your liege pass limited crown. Is that the first one? Yeah, that's the first one. Huh. Interesting. I wonder if he had a hook on us that allowed him to pass that without... Or if I just, like, don't like him now because of that. Alright, greetings, my perceptive liege. Despite our best efforts, my agents have yet to uncover any secrets. I do not believe we'll ever find anything either. Okay. Okay, well, let's go ahead and then send him elsewhere. Um, that's kind of disappointing. I was really hoping for something right away. Uh, he is kind of bad at his job, though, because he only has a 15. I mean, it's not terrible. Let's see, some support schemes. Let's go ahead and find secrets up here, then. And maybe we can, like, force him to join us or something. I don't know. 
I don't know. We could send him all the way into Byzantium and maybe we can get something on the Emperor, but, you know, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Now, the one thing is, we're going to need some money once we get the, uh, whoops, 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 whoops. I gotta, I gotta, like, learn everything here. So we still got 13 months before we can declare war. I don't know if we're going to declare war. Actually, you know, one of the things we could do, and what's different about this game, is you can actually get mercenaries. Mercenaries now just cost base gold versus, in previous game, it was actually maintenance every turn. Which I think you still have to pay maintenance to, um, like, if they die and stuff like that. But we might actually just save some gold and just go for this first um, band. We may or may not need it. We might just declare war, see if we can beat his army. If we can fight him in a good territory, you know, maybe. And then in that case, we wouldn't need to raise it. If we ended up losing the battle or we couldn't kill him properly, then in that case, we might just raise the mercenaries. Or we could also go and, you know, on a... Uh, on a pilgrimage. But I don't think I want to do a pilgrimage yet. I think we're just going to kind of chill. We're young. Pilgrimage, I think, can give you some nice stats as well, but we'll see. Declare war. Now, I know about that. I don't want to declare. Hey! Our wife is now pregnant. Beautiful. Beautiful. Congratulations. Um, greetings, my perceptive leads. Despite our best efforts, we have not discovered any secrets. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. We could keep running it. I don't know if it's one of those things that the more you run it, the better odds you are of getting it. I think let's go ahead and try this. So wait, why is there a penalty, by the way? So if there's any secrets, we get a 10% chance of discovering it. Oh, you know, that's interesting. I didn't notice that. 40% there, 10% there. 15% there, 15% there. The thing is, there's probably not going to be too many secrets yet in the game. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and disrupt schemes. Which is basically just going to prevent anyone from, you know, doing any schemes on us. It's probably too early in the game for there to be too many secrets. Would be my assumption. You know, I don't know if anyone's actually going to start with secrets. We didn't start with any secrets, right? Nah, so I don't think so. Uh, created a liberty faction against our duke. Ah... Okay. I actually kind of dig this. Because I don't like him being able to do this against us. He has 292 troops. We got enough to fight him. Can I actually join this faction? I would very much like to join this faction. I don't know how you do it in this game, though. Mercenaries, holy order. Ah! So the faction military power currently has more power than him. I am going to go ahead and join them. So now what's interesting about this is we can send an ultimatum in eight months, which essentially says, hey, you need a lower crown authority or we're going to declare war on you. Now, I think if we win the battle, he still stays as our liege. The problem is uh, he's probably just going to like us a lot less. But I mean, ultimately, we want his job. So I think I'm OK with that. And the thing is, actually, can I can I create an alliance with you? I don't know if we can even do alliances here. I don't think so, because we're just, like, such a low level. I don't think we can do anything about that. Uh, fervor got increased. Cool, congratulations. Uh, we're just going to keep going here for a little bit longer. Let's go, like, another ten minutes, or at least another five minutes. Okay, to my liege, for too long I have suffered indignities at the hands of the Duke. I will not stand idly by where our liege abuses his loyal vassals. I urge you to join me to fight and dispose this tyrant. Now, the War of Tyranny... I'm not sure if we're going to end up replacing this guy with him. I have literally no idea with how that works. Can I quick save? Ah, uh, F8 maybe? Yeah, I have literally no idea how this works. 
Where is like the main menu here? I can hit escape, but I don't want, ah, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and save here. Just because like, I don't mind, I just don't want him on the throne having all three of these duchies. Or at least having, actually you would just have two. That would still be kind of hard. I'll fight with him. So we currently have joined the war. What is the war against the tyranny? Does it show what happens if we enforce demands? Okay, so we just become autonomous. All right. And he's disposed, actually. Their heirs will inherit the title. Actually, that's great. Because his heir is only 10 years old. Which... We could potentially maybe try murdering his heir, even though we're really bad, but you know, having any time you have kid heirs, that usually is not gonna go too well for people. All right, so we're gonna raise our army. We are gonna go ahead and join our buddy over here, and we're gonna fight alongside him. He's actually going in here. Um, who's in charge? Who's our commander here? He has an 18. How do you switch commanders in this game? Split in half, there you are, new commander. We currently have a 22. Now, the downside is we could potentially die if we actually go. I think I am going to put us in charge of the army, though, because, like, let's get some glory here. If we die, well, we'll just restart the game. It's not that old. All right, so we're going to clearly win this battle. Now, what we would like to do is we would like to be the one in charge of the siege just because I think you get extra money. Siege of Corinth, who is currently in charge of it? Defender, County of Messenia. That's us, right? Yeah, so we are currently in charge of the siege, right? I'm pretty sure we're in charge of the siege. Because it would say a different county. Okay. So we could go destroy his army, but it's so tiny, it doesn't really matter. Once we take over this holding, we should be good. Uh, usually in, like, CK2, a lot of times it was really great to go um, siege down the other holdings, like the cities and stuff like that, because it would give you a lot of money loot. But anyway, so we got a daughter. So unfortunately, that means, well, we have two daughters, so we still don't have a son. What do we want to call our daughter? Uh, we can call her after our mom, after an ancestor, and it gives you just a bunch of different names. Uh, a good Orthodox name or a good Greek name. Uh, Alexia? Yeah, sure, why not? Since we're going for the whole, uh, Alexander the Great Greece thing, although I know Alexander was Macedonia, but whatever. Uh, okay, cool, congratulations. So, victory, we won the battle. Do we see how many troops we ended up losing? As initial soldier, we lost 73. How much in our army? Well, that was actually his army, right? Yeah, this is our army. We lost 88. Ah, interesting. And showed the different phases here. This is all cool. Yeah, I hadn't seen any of that. Okay, so currently sieging down. Uh, we can't assault the force until we break it. Greetings, Count Constan uh, Constantinos. I have prowled through the documents, both ancient and of less servant, uh, certain province. I have finally enough material to make the case that you are rightful lord. All that's missing is a little bribe. So we spend 93 gold, and essentially we can grab uh, the, um, the, uh, 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 the uh, documents. Uh, grab a claim on it. So the thing is you can't just randomly declare war on people in this game You need to have a Casas Belli and so the easiest way to get the Casas Belli is uh, To basically get a claim like what we just did. Um, so let's go ahead and have you do something different now We'll just have you do the, yeah, 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 just do the suffrage stuff Because um, I don't want to put a claim on that one yet it's come to my attention that your bishop is working to fabricate claim on the county. I implore you to remember that you are a count, not by greed. That's my vassal. Oh, so he doesn't like us as much now because... That makes sense. That makes sense. He doesn't like us as much because of the fact that, I guess... Does he have some brave, impatient... Is this us? Oh, that's you. Uh, vassals. Why would he not like that? Because he's gregarious? I have no idea. One thing we can go ahead and do, and we hadn't started this, is we can actually do a, uh, we can try swaying him to our side 
we don't really want our vassal not to like us, especially since he is our spy master. That's very dangerous. So we're going to try swaying him. We have an 82% chance. Yeah, we'll go ahead and try swaying him. The goal is to make him like us more. Essentially, that's all that is. Are we still at war here? Yeah, there we go. I was like, I don't know what happened to the war thing. So, all right. We currently are 50 days left. He is currently sieging down our neighbor. Don't really care. Uh, and we ended up grabbing everything here. So we're at 100%. Do I have to be the one to enforce this? Okay. So my war score is 100. We wouldn't actually be spending this. Only the main participants, so I actually can't do it. So the thing is, we're actually at 100% here, which means we technically have won the war. I don't know why he's going to go kill him, because he could just literally end the battle now, because he can't actually fight against us. Um, I guess we're going to go... Okay, he got killed. All right, and we won. So he currently is dis, uh, disposed, deposed. Cool. So we can go ahead and disband our army now. The question is, we won the siege. We took 17 gold. We actually occupied it there for a little bit, so we're getting the income too. New law, now we're autonomous again. That's great. You finished the fabricating claim. We didn't get any prisoners, right? I actually don't know where the prisoners are. Oh, there they are. No, we didn't get any prisoners from that. Sometimes when you conquer stuff, you also get prisoners, which is kind of nice. So we can actually immediately, if we wanted, go ahead and declare war on this guy. Uh, he's actually up to 242. Interesting. Oh, because he's got the light footmen. He ended up buying some light footmen. Okay. So now that he has a few more troops than us, we probably want to wait a bit. So he has light footmen. What was the counter to light footmen? Um... Skirmishers. Aren't these guys skirmishers? Yeah, they're skirmishers. So we'll want to pick up some bowmen then because that's going to counter their type. All right, but for now, we're going to wrap this first episode up here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, comment, let me know what you think. As always, hit the subscribe button, join the game, comment, share your support. Next episode, we hopefully will be able to get to war. We're going to need some money. Man, if we can figure out some ways to make money, that would be great. But for now, we're probably just going to have to wait for it to tick up. Um, so anyways, hope you enjoyed it. See you guys next episode. Bye, everyone.